Hello everybody, so... Hello everybody, I'm gonna show you how to start your adventure in Valheim. Alright, and there we go. Let's start, boys. Alright, so the first boss is right there. You always uh, get a location of the first boss immediately, which is quite nice. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. He will, um, he will show you around, let you know some tips and tricks about the world. I'm not going to read all that he has to say. I will interact with him. You guys can read what he has to say. But for me, it won't be uh, anything new. This will be the first one. All right, let's get started. Uh, all right, so it looks like some of the map has been revealed by flying over it, I suppose, in the start. I think we should go... Oh, here's a black forest. That's quite dangerous, actually. But it is a good place to go to. Because you can get lots of great stuff there. First thing we gotta do... We gotta collect some rocks, some stones, some, some wood. To craft some of the more basic materials. Obviously get as many raspberries or other food sources as possible mushrooms raspberries uh, blueberries if you're in the black forest there's tons and tons and tons of other stuff you can gather there we go Got a lot of rocks you can punch this tree as well these small trees it will take some time but you will get wood from them or you just pick up those ones that are laying on the ground. That works perfectly fine as well. Watch out for your stamina bar. Alright, there we go. Okay, so we have some basic materials now. Um, and we're getting attacked by a uh, Grayling. Beautiful. That's one of the more weaker enemies in the game. But if they team up on you, that might be the way you go down all right let's craft a stone axe let's craft a basic club if possible no not yet that's fine at least we have this one now you can fight with those as well no problem whatsoever there we go two hits so they're really not that tough mm -hmm. be sure to eat some foods as well you can put it in your hotbar and then press the number where you've put it in to eat you want to eat as many different kinds of foods as possible you can eat up to three different kinds of foods which will in return maximize your health and stamina as much as possible now chop some more trees we need all the wood we can get to start building a little defensive base for ourselves He's just gonna keep telling us what to do. That's totally fine. Pick up every single item that's new to you as well. To gain all the crafting recipes. And even though you think like. Oh, maybe I should spend my time other than uh, killing these graylings. I would advise to go get them. Because you get resin from them, you get wood from them, you get the uh, grayling eyes, which will be useful later on for uh, making portals, for example. So they are quite handy. These boards are very useful as well. The leather scraps is more early game for armor. Uh, it's very useful. And obviously you can get meat from them, raw meat, which is pretty cool. All right, there's a beehive right there. That's beautiful. I don't know if I'm strong enough. All right, let's try. I don't think I can hit it from here, actually. I think I'm going to need to craft myself a bow first. Which means I'm going to have to craft a hammer. There we go. Getting some more crafting recipes. Built myself one of these bad boys. Awesome. And now we can build a bow. Once we have a little bit more wood and a little bit more scraps. That's totally a-okay. 
And he's going to explain about the workbench. Beautiful. You want to make sure the workbenches are under a roof and not too much exposed to the outside. So you want to build a little wall around it just like this. That's, that's, it. that's totally fine to have it like that. Also, if you look at the map by pressing M, uh, when you're playing on a multiplayer ser or server, you can turn yourself visible or invisible by clicking that button. Uh, or if you want to mark locations on your personal map, it won't be shown to other players. You can put an icon down, click whatever which one you want, double click, and then type out whatever you want it to call do be called. So like house, for example. And then you can find it easily on the mini map in the upper right corner. All right, here's some flint. Those are very useful as well for new crafting recipes. Better access, better weaponry, upgrades for the workshop and all that stuff. Flint is a very good material and it respawns as well. All right, so let's go ahead and find some boar, shall we? We need some boar. We need leather scraps. You can also get the leather scraps from uh, Deers, if I'm not mistaken. But without a bow, those are a lot more difficult. A lot, the, without a bow, those are a lot more difficult to kill. Boars are fairly easy. As long as you can find them. Which usually isn't a problem in the meadow area. There we go. In a big open field like this. Boars are easily spotted. They won't attack you immediately. But once you get close they will become aggressive. Once they are aware of your presence. They will turn against you. Alright, how much do we have? Four, I think we needed eight. If I'm not mistaken. These rune stones can be found all around the world. There is plenty of these all around with different tips and tricks about the world or a little bit of lore. As you can see right here. This one talks about the, the Grey Dwarfs. All right, and there we go. And now we got all the materials. We can craft a little crude bow. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Has to be a level one workbench with 10 wood and eight leather scraps. We have a level one workbench to upgrade it. Uh, I will guide you to another video later on. It's not up on the channel yet, but I will put it in the description down below whenever it is ready for you guys to check out. All right, after this, obviously, we've crafted the bow. We need some more arrows now. We only need 8 wood and we'll get 20 arrows in return. That's quite a good way to kill some animals. And not too expensive. And we've crafted some arrows. 40 arrows, that should be plenty. All right, let's make sure you right-click it to equip them. And let's shoot this beehive. Because that will give us some good stuff. Queen bee, beehive and honey. Now honey is another food source which you can use. It's pretty cool. If you hover over the ingredients by the way. About, over all the food sources. You can see their weight, their health, their stamina, duration and healing per tick. Of all of the food sources. Uh, once you eat them another cool thing you can do with the beehive with the queen bee is create a beehive all we need is 10 wood right now to craft a beehive and that will in return give us a good amount of honey to consume also be aware of falling trees they will kill you <laughs> They will do a lot of damage when they fall on top of your head. So be careful how and where you cut down these trees. Alright. It's getting cold. 
gotta create a little campfire soon as well but first things first let's create this beehive and now a little campfire put it next to the door beautiful you can keep it lit for longer by pressing e and putting wood on top of it as you can see six out of ten wood is in there right now as fuel also when you have found an abandoned building like this one you can use your hammer and the repair tool by right clicking select the repair tool by left clicking and repair all the buildings that are broken down it will both look a lot nicer and it will make sure it ain't destroyed as quickly when under attack Another amazing way to survive in this game is by placing down a cooking station. As you can see when I place it very close to it, the rocks will turn blue. A little white bluish color. That means it is connected and when you put food on the food cooking station, it will start to cook. It'll take a little while, you have to stand close to it. You will hear an... Um, an audio cue of it being cooked being done and if you wait for too long the cooked food will turn into coal it will burn and it will turn into coal and you don't have any food so be careful that you don't let it burn if you have a lot a lot a lot of raw food there we go it is done right now let's click it and collect it cook meat beautiful now you can make another one and put it over the same fire very close to each other up until four or five of these. It won't do much except for speeding up the cooking process if you have a lot of raw meat on you. But it might help you in the end uh, by progressing that tiny little bit faster. You can still access the uh, fire from down here, so that's no issue at all. And now you can have, instead of only two meats cooking, ten of them cooking. So we already have a wor working fireplace with cooking stations. We have beehives within the first half hour of the game. It probably can be done a lot quicker if you have luck finding the boars. Because it took me a while to get all the scrap together to uh, create the bow. Alright, one of the next things. It is time to create ourselves a little bed. All we need is a workbench nearby. And eight wood. Let's go and gather that. There we go, we have all the materials to create a bed. Just place it somewhere under shelter, under a roof. And it should all be fine. Now we can claim it. And now this is test subject bed. And we can go ahead and sleep in it. If you want to sleep in your bed, uh, always make sure you have a fire nearby burning. So you don't freeze to death. Um, it won't let you sleep if you don't have a fire nearby. Let's go ahead and sleep till the next day good morning everybody it's a beautiful new day day two and there's a lot a lot a lot of things we want to do today
Also, as you have seen in this video already, I used the workbench a few times to repair the items that I'm carrying. If you are using items like the axe or the bow or whatever, you will, they will uh, lose durability and you can restore that durability quite easily, quite easily by going to a workbench and press the repair an item button right there. It won't work for every single item in the game. For some, for some items you need a forge for example. But if an item is created within the workbench to start off with, or if you've created armor in a forge, for example, you'll have to go to either of those to repair that specific item. Now let's craft ourselves a club as a little bit of a defense. You can upgrade equipment as well. Pressing the upgrade button right here. You can upgrade the racks that you're wearing. Some stone axe, screwed bow, the club. And you can see all the requirements down here. For this one, for example, we need a level 2 workbench. Which we don't currently have. And 5 bone fragments, which we have 2 of. To upgrade the workbench, it is quite easy. You go to your hammer, you go to crafting, and then you can see all the things that have to do with crafting. Um, you have cooking stations for crafting food, workbench, chopping block with a star above it. Now, as you can see, the star next to this chopping block means it is an improvement for another item for example the workbench it also says it down there workbench improvement so to build this one you need 10 wood 10 flint and a workbench nearby you need to place the chopping block next to the workbench or close to it for the upgrade to actually work all right there we go and we can craft the chopping block now, as you can see, when I hold it right here, nothing really happens. You can't even place it down. But you want to place it close to the workbench. You can see the orange little pixels going towards the workbench. That means it is connected to it. So you can place it outside of the building as long as it is in within a certain radius. I'm just going to place it right here because I think it looks quite cool. So now it is connected and it is upgraded to a workbench level 2. And we get more crafting recipes. That's pretty awesome. So now what we can do is we can upgrade all of our stuff basically. We can upgrade the racks to have a little bit more armor. We have one armor right now. It will give us two then. I can upgrade the stone axe, the hammer. Need a little bit more for the crude bow. Need deer hide and wood. But that's very much within our capabilities. As soon as we kill one deer. And we need a little bit of bone fragments for those. A much better weapon in my opinion in the beginning of the game though is either just an axe stone axe flint axe because it does a lot of damage does a lot of slash damage 20 damage in the beginning that's quite a bit or you can craft the flint spear they're not too expensive 10 flint five wood and a little bit of leather scraps for another 20 pierce damage but every single weapon in the game is good against something the club does a lot of does 12 blunt damage which is quite cool quite good now blunt damage is very useful against for example skeletons the flint spear does pierce damage and for example an axe would do slash damage so whatever enemy you're facing make sure you have one of those in your inventory at all times and just test out for yourself what works better against what, what enemy or what do you think personally fits your playstyle better. You can also craft some wooden shields in the beginning of the game. You can build a hoat flat on the land with a little bit of stone. And as I said earlier you can craft more powerful arrows. With just a little bit of wood, resin and feathers you can create fire arrows which are pretty pretty powerful over the entire course of the game you can craft flint head arrows which are pretty good 
It only requires two flint, which are very easy to find. And of course, you can create the wood arrows, which we already crafted earlier. One other very important thing is when you see birds like these ones, be sure to take a bow out, select your wooden arrows and shoot them to get some feathers from them. With those feathers, you can craft a lot more powerful arrows later on, which are going to be an immense help to you. Another great food source are these necks. These necks drop neck tails, which can be cooked, and they are a great, uh, a great source of proteins as well. I highly recommend, especially in the beginning of the game, to farm as many of these necks as possible. They will spawn in areas like this, little, little watery areas like rivers or next to the ocean. The necks will try to escape you every now and then. Sometimes they will start attacking you. Sometimes they will run away from you if you are far away and they see you coming. So be sure to sneak up on them. Otherwise you might lose your food source as they go into the water. And when you are in the water, you will lose stamina swimming. And eventually once your stamina runs out, you will start losing your health. So necktails and raw meat from boars are highly recommended in the beginning of the game. To have at least two sources of protein. Raw meat from a deer and raw meat from a boar uh, are 100% the same. So that doesn't change anything. They take up the same inventory space. But necktail are... As you can already tell, a little bit different. And they will take up their own spots in your inventory. Alright, so we have some raw meat. We have some neck tails. Our honey is finally starting to come in. There we go. We got our first honey right there. Let's put all of the meat in the cooking stations. And wait for it to be done cooking. Which will only take a little bit of time. It takes about 15 seconds. I haven't counted it, but that's approximately what it takes. Some foods take a little bit more time. There is a sort of meat later on in the game, which, uh, which takes about double. But there we go. We got some cooked necktail meat and we got some cooked regular meat. Which is pretty awesome. And these ones give a lot of health boost. 40 health, 30 stamina boost. Of a duration of 1200 seconds and 2 health per tick. And 35 health, 20 stamina for 1000 seconds long. And 20 health per tick. That is pretty awesome. So as you can see down here. Next to our health and our food bars. In the lower left corner. If I eat these ones in a combination with whatever other food is best right now, I think that would be honey. 20 health. Yeah, it looks like honey is the best. Let's combine all of those. There we go. Look at that health or how much it has increased right there. So it is very, very much recommended to get a good amount of food before each battle. Especially boss battles. So you're ready for anything. So we have about 120 health right there. Once it all fills all the way up. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to wait for it to uh, regen. But look at that. That's a lot of health. Compared to the 25 you start off with per default. Combine that with a good armor set and a good weapon. And you're ready to take on pretty much anything. There we go, 112 health. That's a lot of health. Now let's upgrade our uh, our two tools, shall we? We can create a flint axe. There we go, pretty good, pretty good. We only need one of those. Let's also create some ragged pants, because we only have a tunic right now. 
Beautiful. Get ourselves some more armor. Right click the armor as well. You'll actually equip it. And you have now two armor right there. Let's grab some fire arrows. There we go. Got 20 of those. And as I said earlier, you can right click the arrows to choose which one you want to use first. Now the wooden arrows do 22 pierce damage. And the fire arrows do 11 pierce damage, but also 22 fire damage. So once again, depending on which enemy you fight, it's very useful to have different kinds of weapons or arrows on you at all times. Now, eventually your inventory will become pretty chaotic. So it's time to start making some chests. You can make a chest like that by going to your hammer, going to your furniture and click the chest icon it only costs 10 wood and a workbench nearby and you have a little bit of an inventory right there 10 slots that's pretty useful just put anything you don't want to use right now in there for example hat trophies from all the different animals and monsters that you kill And for example, rocks or wood that you're not using at that point in time. As you can only carry up to 300 weight in the beginning of the game. You will be allowed to upgrade your carrying capacity later on. Once you find the trader and you can buy something from him. A belt which will increase your capacity of carrying for another 150 weight. That means you're going to have a weight capacity of 450 there you have it that looks a lot more organized already now the spears are also particularly helpful you can block with them by right click just like pretty much any other weapon you can left click for a melee attack or you can click the secondary attack the mouse button free which is the middle mouse button to throw a spear Pretty much all the weapons have a secondary attack, so make sure you keep an eye on the lower right corner. So you are aware of all the things you can do with a specific item. Beautiful. What a shot. There we go. Some new materials with deer hide. You can create leather armors now. Create some leather armor. All you need is six deer hides and a workbench level two, which we have. Six deer hides for the pants, the tunic. And for the leather helmet, you also only need six deer hide, which is quite easy to obtain. Since we only shot one deer and we gained two deer hides from that one. As you saw, I used the fire arrow, which are quite powerful. It should be a one shot kill on a deer with a fire arrow and a crude bow that's basically all you need so i would say happy hunting and that everybody would do it for the first hour in Valheim. of course there's a lot of things you can do better faster depending on the seed which you, in which you play in and the spawn of specific animals like deers or boars but this is kind of the basic of what you should expect within the first hour. You should at least have a little bit of a home. You, can, you don't have to make it all from scratch. You can just transform one of these old buildings like I did. Uh, try and get some honey, um, some beehives from those abandoned buildings. They're not in every single abandoned building, but a lot of them do have it. Craft yourself a beehive, craft yourself a campfire with one or two or multiple cooking stations. Upgrade your workbench so you can upgrade your gear, your armor, your weaponry and all that stuff. Craft yourself a bed and a chest to organize and be safe for the rest of the game. Hope you guys enjoyed if this was helpful at any given point in time then please remember to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and want to see more of this and more other tutorials hope to see you guys in the next one bye everybody